Proton, get that done real quick. I can auto this right here. And right here I want to keep all the reds, so I'm going to keep the reds there. I'm going to go with yellow, desaturate that, desaturate this. Let's go through all of these and desaturate all of them. And with that, you leave only the reds and oranges right there. I can kill off all the oranges too, but you notice how the red's getting flattened? That's why I still keep some of the orange there. But that's the effect you might have seen in a lot of photos where they have that rose kind of sitting there and everything else is desaturated. Um, this flower, for example, we can do the same exact thing. Just kill off every other color and keep the yellow. I need some of that green, apparently. Got the rest of the green, and you can saturate the yellow, and you preserve just that color. So this is the effect you've seen a lot of um, photographers use. Uh, I didn't really want this effect for this image though, so I'll just reset the entire image. I'm gonna do an auto tone again. White balance. I'll do an auto develop. Um, I want to change some of this though. Let's say I want to give it a more tinge of yellow because it just looks better sometimes that way. Bring up some of the blacks again, darken those areas. Possibly give a slight fill light to bring up some colors. And I'm gonna recover the top area right here. Just pay attention to that top part, how the buildings are very barely visible. If I bring it all the way up, they're pretty visible now. You can see it a lot better. I'm gonna bring up its vibrant slightly. Play with the contrast. All right. So, when you're taking a photo with a very long lens, sometimes you get vignetting on the sides, uh, or sometimes you don't get vignetting. I like adding the vignetting because it makes it look like a, you know, authentic photo. So if you sc uh, scroll down, you'll notice there's a section called vignettes. Adding it to this way, we'll start removing a vignette. Bring it down, we'll add a vignette. So if it brings all the way down, you start seeing a vignette being added. This midpoint tells you how big that circle is that the this vignetting can happen. So if I bring it all the way up, it's being clamped at the corners. If I bring it all the way down, it starts bleeding in a whole lot. I always find it somewhere around here is pretty nice, but you see the nice effect it gives it. Uh, so you can see how different, drastically different this image looks like before um, you know I did all these changes. You can always go back here and click reset all and you'll notice how it became all dim and everything. So these are tricks that photographers use a lot uh, to enhance their photos after they take their pictures. You might think of it as cheating, but think of it as when they're developing the photo, they can change some of these aspects by developing them in their dark room. So I'm going to do that real quick again, bring it back to what it was. Temperature over there, there's blacks in again. Vibrance up, let's make the clarity up. Let's bring up the contrast, lower down the brightness slightly, bring the recovery. That'll bring this up a bit. Go back down, bring my vignetting in, hold that up, and you have this really cool effect. Uh, another question you might be asking is what if you don't like the angle of this and you want to crop it slightly? There's a button right here called Crop Overlay. When you click on it, it gives you this little outline which allows you to essentially rotate and crop however you feel. You can change how much of the area you're revealing. It also gives you a preview over here of how it'll look like. You know, some people like that whole leaning shot right there. Let's stretch this all the way. Like, okay, it's leaning now. Once you're done, just, do just double click and bam, it's cropped and rotated the way you want to. But the problem with this sometimes is when you're doing lens vignetting, that's why you have a whole post crop. After the crop, you can add the amount of amount you want to what has been cropped. I'm going to change my midpoint, pull that up. So you can play with the vignetting after the cropping. You can change how round this is, how much you want to feather it. The problem with this vignetting, though, after the post crop, it never looks as good as the original vignette.
I'm gonna grab another image now. Let's grab this one. Let's bring this back up again. Auto tone again. Voila, image brought back up. The problem is sometimes it goes overexposed. Uh, I don't like that. This image right here was taken as raw. So if you remember when I go back to an image like this, when I go to custom, there's only as shot and auto. This image was taken as a raw. So it has a lot more information baked in. So let me set this auto tone, bring my exposure down slightly. Under the white balance now, there's a lot of different presets. There's like auto, which you already have. There's daylight, so I'm taking this outside. Cloudy day. Shade. Tungsten. Fluorescent lights. Or with the flash. This tries to automatically compensate your white balance based on the settings that you've had. Uh, other presets are um, in here. There's a lot of presets that you, some of you might like a lot, like uh, the aged photo. It makes it look like, oh wow, it's old school. There's also, make sure you always go back to default before you change it because it does remember the previous settings and just applies onto it. So you have the antique grayscale. Set that again. Antique light. So you have a lot of settings that you can try to play with it. People like the sepia a lot. Um, there's the general punched, which you probably can't see too much in this one. It basically punches up the uh, colors slightly. Uh, selenium tone. Zeroed. Hey, this is very desaturated.